Hey y'all, welcome to Peyton Energetics. I'm Peyton, and today we are taking a look at Arcturian starseeds. So over the past couple of videos, we have been taking a look at the different starseed races, where they come from, what their civilization is like, what role they have played in galactic history, and then taking a look at some of the common characteristics of starseeds from that civilization. So we have taken a look so far at the Pleiadians, the Syrians, and today we are going to take a look at the third most common starseed race, the Arcturians. But before we jump into that, let's start off by talking a little bit about what a starseed is. This is kind of a new term that has popped up in the spiritual community over the past couple of years. And I'm noticing that there's a little confusion as to what it means to be a starseed. And there's some confusion between the difference between a starseed and a light worker. Can you be both? Do you have to be one or the other? There's just some jumbling of terms going on right now. So what are we talking about when we talk about starseeds? Well, a starseed is just someone who is incarnated on planet Earth right now but whose soul originates from another star system. So what do we mean when we talk about having a soul from another star system? All that means is that star seeds are someone whose soul was first birthed into another star civilization. And the guides tell us that there are six or seven different galactic races or star races who work most closely with Earth that have been involved in the human project since the beginning of time and even contributed many times their own DNA to create the modern human. So when we talk about star seeds, we are usually talking about humans whose soul originated from one of these six or seven different star systems. Now, some of the star systems that you may be familiar with, and some of these are what we think of as the more common star seed races, are probably the top three are the Pleiadians, the Syrians, and the Arcturians, who we will be talking about today. But there are also a number of star races that are very involved with our human evolution and our role in the galaxy, but we don't hear quite so much about them. So some of these lesser known star races may include the Lyrans, the Vagans, the Orions, the Cassiopeians and the Andromedans. And the list really goes on from there. So in these videos, we're gonna take a look at each of these different star races, because as you start to learn more about them, you can kind of compare and contrast and get to know the different personality types and some of the special gifts and abilities that each of these different star races are bringing to earth right now. Because if you are a star seed, that means that your soul originates in one of these other galactic civilizations. And normally when we are talking about star seeds, we are talking about a soul that has incarnated on earth right now to bring high vibrational energy, to bring advanced knowledge, multi-dimensional knowledge, and also skills and abilities, even healing modalities to earth right now to support earth through the ascension process. So that's really what you can think of as being the job or the mission of the star seed is to bring this higher dimensional knowledge from their home star system and anchor that into the earth collective. So that is what you are doing if you are a star seed. So if you are a star seed, if you resonate with that term, if you are curious about it and want to get to know these different star races, a lot of times that is because you are a star seed yourself and you are here to do something really important because one of the most important and hallmark signs of a star seed is that you are here to do something big. And so that is why so many star seeds feel that they have a soul mission. So part of the reason of getting to know all of these different star races is to help you rediscover your soul's purpose, your soul's path. Because if you are a star seed, I can guarantee that you have a mission and that you can probably feel that you really want to get on with it. So that's what we're going to be doing as we meet each of these different star civilizations. And so today we are going to be talking about the Arcturians. 
And this may be one of those star races that you have heard about. This is one of the ones that most people in the spiritual community are familiar with. There are some amazing people out there channeling the Arcturians. And especially if you are a healer, if you are drawn to healing modalities, if you work in the healing arts, especially alternative or spiritual practices, there's a very good chance that you may have Arcturian lineage yourself or that you may be working with Arcturian guides. Because one of the things that we will be talking about as we take a deeper look at the Arcturians today is that they are master healers. But before we dive into all of the special gifts and abilities of the Arcturians, let's start by taking a look at the Arcturians themselves. So who are we talking about when we talk about the Arcturians? Well, we are talking about one of, if not the most advanced galactic civilizations there is. So one of the things that you will hear about the Arcturians most often is that they are really one of the most highly evolved and highly advanced civilizations in the galaxy. So they are really one of the master civilizations. So one of the reasons that we talk about and work with the Arturians so much is because of this amazing multidimensional knowledge that they are bringing to us on the planet right now. So the Arturians come from the Boots constellation, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but you get the gist. And they are from a star system that has a star, Arcturus, that is said to be about 26 times larger than our sun. So this is a massive, massive star system that we're talking about. And the Arcturians, because they are so advanced and so highly evolved, they are really known to be the spiritual guardians of our galaxy. And not only do they have some of the most advanced healing technology and tools in the galaxy, they also have some of the most advanced technology. So that is one of the reasons why when we think of the Arcturians, we think of them as being spiritual guardians. And so one of the roles that the Arcturians play in the galaxy is as a guardian of evolving civilizations like us here on Earth. So the Arcturians, one of the things that they are known for is helping to protect newer civilizations like us here on Earth from other beings in the galaxy that do not have benevolent intentions toward us or toward other evolving civilizations. So the Arcturians, and we will talk a little bit more as we get into this video about how the Arcturians are a little more hands off than some of our other star ancestors, especially the Pleiadians and the Syrians. So this, the Arcturians really they were not quite as physically involved with us as some of the other star races have been, but they have been very involved in protecting us. And that is something that they are still doing to this day. So even though the Arcturians are not necessarily some of our galactic ancestors that were tromping around here on earth, teaching the modern human or the evolving human, the way the Syrians and the Pleiadians were, it doesn't mean that they weren't equally as evolved with us and helping us to, to develop, to grow and to keep away some of the ET species that did not have the best intentions toward us. So that's one of the ways that you can think of the Arcturians is as spiritual guardians uh, of evolving civilizations because they have all the best technology. So these are one of the star races that the whole galaxy takes quite seriously. Um, so again, you can think of them as guardians, as protectors. So what is the Arcturian system like? What is their civilization like? How is their society structured? It always is helpful to kind of understand um, some of the other star races and how they work in their own home systems, because you'll tend to see some of those traits, those values in star seeds that come from that civilization. So one of the interesting things about the Arcturian system is we think of it as being one of our highest dimensional civilizations. Again, we talked about how they are one of the most advanced civilizations in the galaxy. And because of that, the Arcturians, when we think of them, they are often existing at a level that is not 
physical. So a lot of times when we are working with Arcturian beings, maybe you are channeling Arcturians or working with Arcturian guides, a lot of times we are talking about beings that are not in physical form, either because they never needed to incarnate into physical form or because they have evolved out of the need to be in physical bodies. So that's one of the things that's interesting to note about the Arcturians. The guides do say, however, that there are still Arcturian beings in a physical form. And these are some of the Arcturians that exist at some of the lower dimensional ranges. And so when we are talking about the physical Arcturians, what do they look like? Because as you start to work with these different star races, you notice that they have very different physical appearances. So one thing that you might notice about the Arcturians is that they tend to be very short. So unlike some of our star ancestors who are much, much taller than we are as humans, the Arcturians come in on the other end of that scale. So most people who have worked with physical Arcturians describe them as being between three and a half and four feet tall. And they are also often seen to have blue skin, very large bald heads and very large eyes. So these are a couple of the physical characteristics that you might notice if you're working with some of the more physically focused Arcturian beings. Now, one other thing that you might notice about the physical Arcturians is that they have three fingers. So unlike the five fingers, of course, that we have, you might notice Arcturians having three. That's one of the traits that a lot of people describe with Arcturian beings. Now, another thing that is kind of interesting about the Arcturians is that the physical Arcturians are said to be all identical in appearance. And this is something that's really unique about the Arcturians. I have not noticed this in any of the other star races that I've worked with but the Arcturians are said to be all identical in appearance. And one of the reasons for that, according to the guides, is that they wanted to move past competition in their civilization. So one of the ways they did that is to remove competition over physical appearance by being all identical. You don't really worry about what you look like if everyone looks exactly like you. So the again, the Arturians showing how evolved they are, that they have moved beyond the need to really have a unique physical appearance. So as you start to work with Arturian beings, you may notice that they all look the same. And there's a very good reason for that. So a couple things that are unique about the Arturian civilization is not only do all the Arcturians look identical, but they also exist in a civilization in a star system without aging or disease. So they have evolved beyond the need to have physical breakdown of their physical bodies. So instead they live for, the guides tell us, about 350 to 400 years, but they don't have to experience a lot of that troubling illness, sickness, aging, disease uh, that we are struggling with all the time here on planet Earth. So the Arcturians have evolved beyond that. And something else that is unique about the Arcturian civilization is that it is run off of frequency or off of vibration. So what you do, the role that you hold in the Arcturian civilization is determined based on your vibration. So they, also, they actually use the colors in a being's aura and their energy and their vibration to tell what their role will be in Arcturian society. So it's how you decide what your life's work will be is based on your vibration, your frequency, and the colors in your aura. So they are a very frequency-based civilization. And something else that is really kind of cool and unique about the Arcturians is how they approach children. So in contrast with how we run things here on Earth, the Arcturians only allow people to bring children into the collective. So you are only eligible to be on the parenting track, so to speak, if you are of the highest vibration and highest consciousness in the collective. So they view bringing new beings into their collective as such a sacred task that it is reserved for the best of the best. 
So it is the colors in your aura. It is your level of love and consciousness that determines whether you are eligible to be a parent, to bring new beings into the collective. And when I heard that, I thought that was such a fascinating concept. Imagine if it was like that here on earth, that only the most loving, the most highly evolved, the most committed to being a parent could have children. Imagine what a different world we would live in. So I thought that was something that was so cool about the Arcturians. I have not heard that about any other star race that I have encountered so far and thought it was kind of a good idea. So that's another kind of unique thing about the Arcturians and their civilization, all based on vibration. So kind of a unique thing. So what are the Arcturians known for? What are their biggest gifts? What are their unique skills and talents? And what are some of the things that you might see as special abilities in an Arcturian starseed? Well, we've already talked about, of course, probably the two main things that will jump out at you about the Arcturians is, of course, how advanced and high dimensional they are. So when we talk about working with the Arcturians, we are generally talking about working with very high dimensional beings. And again, a lot of times they are not physical. The second thing that the Arcturians are famous for across the galaxy is their healing abilities. They are known to be master healers and especially to be master emotional healers. So the Arcturians, they often come into play and have a big role in helping heal souls that have gone through very traumatic incarnations. So when souls have been born onto planets or into star systems that are very filled with conflict, with war, with suffering, like we're going through here on earth, um, a lot of times when those souls depart, they will go to the Arcturian system for emotional healing. So the Arcturians are known to be masters of helping these souls that have been so damaged by traumatic life experiences, traumatic death experiences, to help them heal, help them reintegrate and recover from the trauma of their incarnation. So that is one of the things that the Arcturians are most well respected for throughout the galaxy is that incredible healing ability. So one of the things that you may notice if you are working with Arcturian beings, or if you are a healer yourself, is that the Arcturians are great at teaching healing modalities. So if you are someone who is drawn to, to doing energetic healing, spiritual healing, you may be already working with the Arcturians, but if you're not, they can be a great help in helping you evolve the healing modalities that you use. So this is one of their skills and one of the things that it's great to pull on the Arcturians for um, is because this is really their expertise. So that is, of course, those are probably the two things that the Arcturians are most known for, just their advanced high dimensional status in the galaxy, their role as guardians of not only us, but of the ga galaxy as a whole but also their incredible healing abilities. So how do you know if you are an Arcturian starseed? Or even if you're working with Arcturians, maybe you are you know, developing your intuitive abilities or channeling, how do you know if you're working with Arcturians? Well, one of the things that is unique about Arcturian energy is that it's so easy for humans to connect to. This is really one of the star races that is the easiest and most accessible to humans. So if you're just starting out and you want to start working with your star ancestors, or maybe you want to start channeling or doing more intuitive work, uh, or even just connecting with your star family, the Arcturians are a great place to start because their energy is so accessible to us. It is not one of these energies like some of our other star ancestors that is very hard to connect with. It doesn't feel foreign to us as humans, and it doesn't feel super alien. Uh, some of our star ancestors can be a little tricky to connect with, and the energy can feel so foreign to us that it can make humans pull back a little, but not so with the Arcturians. Their energy is just super loving, 
super comfortable and just so easy to connect with. So I always tell people who are interested in starting to connect with their galactic family to start with the Arcturians because the energy is just so yummy. You will love connecting with it. It makes you feel safe. It makes you just feel like you are wrapped in a warm blanket. So it's a great place to start. And even if you're just starting out on your spiritual path, the Arcturians are really easy to connect with. So I always recommend them as the first place to start when you are starting to connect with your galactic family. Um, another thing that you may notice as you start to reach out to the Arcturians is that a lot of times their energy will come through as blue. Um, you may see them as blue balls of energy, fields of energy, or just as beings with blue skin. Because most people who see uh, clairvoyantly um, and work with the Arturians describe them as having blue skin. So blue skin, as we have talked about in several of these videos, is a trademark of several of our galactic ancestors, but the Arcturians are definitely one of those. So the color blue, whether it's blue energy or blue skin, very common with the Arcturians. So if you're getting blue as you start to do your meditations or start to connect with spirit, uh, that could be a sign that you are connecting with an Arcturian being or an Arcturian and guide. And again, one thing you may notice with the energy is how comfortable it is. So this is not one of those energies like the Pleiadians have a very electrical feeling energy. It can be very buzzy, very energizing. Um, but one thing that, that may clue you in that you're working with Arcturian energy is that feeling of just soft and soothing. So that's one thing you can feel into as you start to try to connect with your star family and you start to work with the Arcturians. Look for that signature, soothing, comfortable energy. It, it's, it's gonna be surprisingly easy for you to connect with. So now that you know all about the Arcturians themselves, where they come from, what their mission is, what their role has been in galactic history, Let's take a look now at Arcturian star seeds. So given all these incredible characteristics that the Arcturians themselves have, what are some of the things that stand out about Arcturian star seeds in particular? Because as we work through each of the star races, you'll see that different star seeds have different unique characteristics that come from their home star system. So when we talk about Arcturian star seeds, we are talking about the star race that, from my experience only, is probably the third most common of the star seed races um, after the Syrians and the Pleiadians. So there are quite a few Arcturian star seeds on Earth right now. And the guides tell us that one of the reasons there aren't more Arcturian star seeds is that Arcturian soul energy being, as we talked about, so highly evolved, so high dimensional, it's not a great fit for the human body. So one reason that we don't have more Arcturian star seeds is that what the guides say is the energy is not super compatible with the dense human body. So when an Arcturian soul tries to squeeze into one of these human physical bodies, it's not a great fit and it's not super comfortable for the star seed. So one of the things that is kind of a hallmark of Arcturian star seeds is issues with the physical body. That might mean that the Arcturian star seed has more physical issues than the average person, or that they have more health issues than the average person, or that they just aren't comfortable being in a physical body. Uh, I have a couple Arcturian clients who they just have a beef with being in a physical body at all. It is just uncomfortable to them. They don't like the way it feels. It feels too just heavy and dense. They don't like carrying it around. They have told me that it feels like a stranger to them, that it feels like they're wearing a costume that doesn't fit. 
So this is one of those hallmark traits of the Arcturian starseed is a little bit of discomfort perhaps in being in physical form. And again, this goes back to what we talked about with the Arcturians themselves, which is that they have largely evolved out of the need to be in physical body. So coming into a dense physical form, especially into you know, a planet that is so dense, so polarized, can cause the Arcturian starseed to be particularly uncomfortable. So that's one of the first things that jumps out to me about Arcturian starseeds. Something else that you may notice that Arcturian starseeds tend to have lower blood pressure than the average human. So that's one of the unique things that a lot of Arcturian starseeds will report. And they also have kind of a draw toward living in warmer climates. So wanting to be in warmer spaces, live in warmer cities, warmer locales is something that a lot of Arturian starseeds are drawn to. And also, as we are talking about physical characteristics, one thing that I notice in so many Arturian starseeds is a tendency to incarnate into bodies with darker skin tones. So as compared to some of our star races, like the Lyrans, the Andromedans, and the Pleiadians, who tend to often incarnate into bodies with very light, very Caucasian skin tones, I have tended to notice in most of my clients and students that have Arcturian lineage, that they tend to incarnate into slightly darker skin tones. And again, this may trace back to the skin tone of the Arcturians themselves, which we talked about being blue. So again, that's just one of those quirks of the Arcturian starseed is that you may notice them having slightly darker skin tones. And also I notice they tend to have very large eyes. So those are some of the physical things that you might notice if you are working with, or if you know an Arcturian starseed. Some other things that you may notice with your Arcturian starseed are, first of all, that they tend to be very organized. So Arcturian starseeds are great planners, great for getting the task done, keeping people on schedule. They're also known to be great communicators. So when you are needing to get ideas across to people to be clear, an Arcturian starseed is someone you are going to want to have on your team. They are also known to be very multi-talented. So your Arcturian starseed is going to be that ringer that you know who is good at everything. So multi-talented is one of the things that really shines about the Arcturians. Now on the less fun side of the scale, one thing that Arcturian starseeds often report along with of course that discomfort with the physical body is that a lot of Arcturian starseeds incarnate into very difficult family dynamics. And in particular, because that in and of itself is not unique to Arcturians, that is something a lot of starseeds do, um, is deliberately incarnate into very challenging families. And they do that very intentionally. But again, they get here and it can really mess up the starseeds life. But what is unique about Arcturians in terms of this difficult family life is that Arcturian starseeds are known to have trouble with one or the other parent. And so that's very kind of a unique twist on the very general starseed rule that most of us incarnate into challenging family dynamics. But with the Arcturians, it tends to manifest as having an issue with one parent or the other. So that's one of the more unique things about how this shows up for an Arcturian starseed. Something else to know about Arcturian starseeds is they tend to be very drawn to space. And that actually makes sense since they are from a civilization that is the guardian of the galaxy. So your Arcturian starseed may be very drawn to anything related to space, whether that is astrology or astronomy or ETs, UFOs, contact experience, anything that draws you to the sky tends to be very resonant with an Arcturian starseed. They may also be very, very interested in ancient civilizations. So again, this just interest in 
old civilizations, whether that is Egypt or Atlantis or Lemuria, um, may be very much something that the Arcturian star seed is interested in and drawn to. And finally, some other little details that may help you relate to an Arcturian star seed or show that you are an Arcturian star seed is Arcturians are known to be truth seekers. They are truth seekers, truth tellers. So they tend to be very opinionated, very strong-willed, very intelligent. Um, but one other thing that you may notice about the Arcturian star seeds in particular is they tend to be a little slow to trust people. And again, this is, they're not the only star race that uh, has that particular trait, but the Arcturians are known to be a little more reserved, a little more standoffish and slow to trust and also tend to very often keep their friend groups small. So Arcturians generally are not star seeds who want to be around a lot of strangers or in big crowds. Um, they tend to be very discerning with their company, with who they are around and who they let get close to them. So they, they are slow to trust. So these may be your friends who hang back a little or a little more reserved, um, but who are super talented, super devoted, and just good at everything they do. But they're just not always wanting to be in the thick of the action, mixing it up with everyone around them. So that may be one of those signs of being an Arturian starseed is just the need to keep a little bit of personal space from people. So that is one of the things that you may notice in your Arcturian starseeds. So how do you tell if you are an Arcturian starseed yourself? Well, one clue is always just to notice how did you respond to this information? As you heard the various traits of Arcturian starseeds and what the Arcturians themselves are all about, how did that resonate in your body? If you started to have that feeling that it was very familiar and that it felt very much like you, that it just resonated. That's always a great sign that your intuition is telling you that this may be something that you are connected with. But the way that I always encourage people to get the answer directly for themselves as to who their star ancestors are is just always to sit in meditation and ask your higher self and your guides because your higher self and your guides will tell you all about your star family, uh, where you where your soul originated, what your soul's mission is. And if you are a star seed, you can bet that you are here on a mission and that it's an important one. So this is always the best way is to get the answers yourself. And then to just listen to your body as you start to take in information about these different star races. You know, as you start to hear Arcturian channels, how do the messages resonate with you? How does it sit in your body? Because even if you feel like you're not yet a master intuitive or a channel and you're not quite confident that you can get concrete answers yet from your intuition, your body will always give you the answer. So that's always the shortcut to your intuition is to listen to how your body responds when you hear messages from this civilization or when you hear a description of them and what their role is in galactic history. What does your body do? That is always the best way to connect with your intuition, especially as a first step. You will always build your communication as you practice more. So I hope this helps you get to know the Arcturians a little better, understand their role in our galactic history and hopefully our future. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.